بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of allah the beneficent the merciful assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh welcome to my channel brothers and sisters today i have another reaction video and in this video I'm going to be reacting to 10 reasons why Islam is a truth. We will explain like 10 reasons why Islam is a truth. So let's get to the video and see the incomplete details. Let's get to it. My top 10 reasons why Islam is the true religion. Number one, the concept of God in Islam. The concept of God in Islam is logical and goes with your inner belief that God gave you. Because we believe Allah is one who has no partner, no son, no equal and nothing like him. He is the most merciful and the most just. He is the only one worthy of worship and obedience. Allah is the eternal, the self-sufficient, the creator and the sustainer of the universe. We Muslims believe that Allah is the same God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus and all the prophets, peace be upon them all. Number two, the formation of the embryo. The Quran mentions in detail the formation of the human embryo, something that cannot be seen except with an electronic microscope. How could anyone 1400 years ago know this? In the Quran, Allah speaks about the stages of man's embryonic development and indeed we created humankind from an extract of clay, then placed each human as a sperm drop in a secure place, then we developed the drop into a clinging clot of blood, then developed the clot into a lump of flesh, then developed the lump into bones, then clothed the bones with flesh, then we brought it into being as a new creation. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Quran 23.12-14 Dr. Keith Moore, a professor of anatomy and embryology, wrote a book called The Developing Human Clinically Oriented Embryology with Islamic Editions in collaboration with some Muslim scholars. He claimed that the Quran contains accurate descriptions of the stages of human embryonic development that were unknown to science until recently. Similarly, Dr. Maurice Bukel, a French physician and author, wrote a book called The Bible, the Quran and Science, in which he argued that the Quran contains scientific miracles that prove its divine origin. He also claimed that the Quran contains accurate information about embryology that was not discovered until modern times. Number three, Haman mentioned by name in the Quran. Before explaining who Haman is and why his name and status is important, first we must have a brief understanding of what hieroglyphics are. Hieroglyphics were the ancient writing script of the Egyptians. Scientists believed it started in the 32nd century BC before the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. By the 5th century AD, knowledge of hieroglyphic writing was lost until the 1820s when it was deciphered using the Rosetta Stone. So again, why is Haman important? Haman is important because he is mentioned in the Quran as essentially being Pharaoh's architect or head of construction. The Quran says, and Pharaoh said, O eminent ones, I have not known you to have a god other than me. Then ignite for me, O Haman, a fire upon the clay and make for me a tower that I may look at the god of Moses. And indeed, I do think he is among the liars. Quran 28.38 Haman is being commanded by Pharaoh to build a tall tower. Prior to unlocking the hieroglyphics, skeptics of the Quran, assuming the Prophet copied the Quran from the Bible, said this was a copying error because Haman was mentioned in the Bible as an assistant of a Persian king after the time of Moses, not head of construction of Pharaoh at the time of Moses. But with the deconstruction of the hieroglyphics, Egyptologists found Haman working in Egypt as overseer of the stone masons. How could anyone 1400 years ago, let alone an unlettered man, know this? Number 4. Was the ruler of Joseph a king or a pharaoh? The Quran corrects the Bible. In the Bible it says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they quickly brought him out of the pit. And when he had shaved himself and changed his clothes, he came in before Pharaoh. Genesis 41, 14 advances in our knowledge of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs have revealed that the word Pharaoh is a title that originates from the Egyptian term 
or a literally great house describing the royal palace. Historically, however, Pharaoh only started being used as a title for the king. Much later in Egyptian history during the New Kingdom period, this means that the Bible gets it wrong historically. It is an anachronism to use the word Pharaoh as a title in reference to the Egyptian ruler. With regard to the Egyptian ruler who was a contemporary of Joseph, the Quran uses the title king. He is never once labeled as Pharaoh. So the Quran's usage of Pharaoh respects what we know historically about the changing meaning of the word. Amazingly, these historical facts were unknown at the time of the Quranic revelation in the 7th century. As our knowledge of Egyptian hieroglyphs had long been lost, knowledge of the old Egyptian hieroglyphs had been totally forgotten until they were finally deciphered in the 19th century C with the discovery of the Rosetta Stone over 1000 years after the revelation of the Quran. Number 5. Abu Lahab never becoming a Muslim there is a chapter in the Quran revealed early on in the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him mission. In this chapter it states that Abu Lahab, a member of the Quraysh tribe living in Mecca where the Prophet started preaching Islam would go to hell. Essentially for Abu Lahab to go to hell from the Islamic perspective would be for him to refuse Islam even after the clear proofs came to him. Abu Lahab did in fact die a disbeliever and if he wished to disprove Islam all he had to do was become a Muslim. Yet he never did and thus this prophecy came true. Allah says in the Quran, May the hands of Abu Lahab perish and he himself perish. Neither his wealth nor worldly gains will benefit him. He will burn in a flaming fire. And so will his wife, the carrier of thorny kindling. Around her neck will be a rope of palm fiber. Quran chapter 111, number 6, the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, Indeed, it is we who send down the Quran and indeed we will be its guardian. Quran 15 to 9. Although the book was revealed over 1400 years ago, it has been perfectly preserved, which itself is surprising. Remember, this is before the printing press, and at this time period, most people in the world couldn't read or write. To make a claim that your book would be preserved until the end of the world is a very big claim to make. Millions of Muslims have memorized the Quran in original Arabic language. Do you know any other religion which has this? We still have very very old copies of the Quran which matches with the Quran we have now. The oldest Quran in the world is the Birmingham Quran manuscript which is dated between 568 AD 645 AD. The script of this Birmingham Quran manuscript matches exactly with the Quran we have now Alhamdulillah. The Quran is also amazing because it has linguistic miracles, prophecies, scientific miracles, etc. However, I just want to emphasize here that the Quran is linguistically so miraculous that even disbelievers were shocked by it at the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even though those disbelievers were very eloquent in Arabic language, but they could not match Quranic verses. The Quran challenges disbelievers to print a chapter like the Quran in Arabic, but still this challenge has not been proven by anyone and will never because Islam is the truth. Alhamdulillah. Number 7. Bedouin Arabs would compete in the building of tall buildings. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him prophecy. He said when you see barefoot make it destitute shepherds competing in constructing tall buildings. The barefooted Bedouins competing in building tall buildings. Today we find in the Arabian Peninsula the Arabs who used to be impoverished herders of camels and sheep are competing in building the tallest buildings. The tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalifa in the United Arab Emirates. Saudi Arabia also announced to make a taller building than Burj Khalifa. As you can see the prophecy came true. Number 8. Prophecy of Conquest Javier Abdullah reports that while digging the trench outside Madinot to repel an approaching army, a massive boulder obstructed them that no axe would break. With time running out and with people's fears and hunger eating away at them, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, walked over and picked up the axe. He said in the name of Allah and hammered the boulder, reducing a chunk of it to rubble. He said, Allah is the greatest. I have been given the keys to Sham. I can see its red palaces at this very moment. Then he shattered another chunk and said, Allah is the greatest. I have been given the keys to Persia. I can see Madain's white palace.
completed the last chunk and said, O Allah is the greatest. I have been given the keys to Yemen. By Allah, I can see the gates of Sena at this very moment from here. What's amazing about this prophecy is that it was made when huge armies were approaching the Muslims in Medina. Any reasonable person would have assumed they would definitely be crushed. And yet despite that, the Prophet prophesied massive conquests. Most importantly, these prophecies came true. All praise is for Allah. Number 9. The Middle East once was green and will be green again. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the hour will not begin until the land of the Arabs once again becomes meadows and rivers. Something to keep in mind is that the Prophet said once again meaning it once was green and it will become green again. This is astounding as how would any Arab know that the Arabian Peninsula was ever green? How would they know that it would be green again? The fact that it's historically true and is becoming green right now is an astounding prophecy to say the least. Number 10. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, split the moon. Disbelievers of that time requested the miracle to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to split the moon, so he did split the moon. They were eyewitnesses for this from both the non-Muslim side and also the Muslim side. The amazing thing about this was even the king of India saw the moon split and because of that he became a Muslim later. If you want more evidence about this miracle, you can watch this video on One Message Foundation YouTube channel. In this video, Sheikh Atman gave a lot of evidence to prove this miracle. Conclusion. There are many more proofs for Islam. This is just a short list of the ones I thought would be beneficial to you all. It's very helpful and useful to have these proofs so that you can be assured that Islam is indeed the truth. Yeah, brothers and sisters, the video was, uh, <clears throat> the video was ended and the video is proving that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, what he said by then, it's like all visible today and we can see in our eyes. So the proof of the prophecy, but the video says, 10 reasons that, that the 10 reasons why Islam is truth. But most likely the video was a kind of mixing miracles of Prophet Muhammad and the Quran. Yeah, that's what I figured. So brothers and sisters, subscribe to the channel, please. And uh, like, subscribe for more videos so you can be notified. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.